King Charles III will soon be taking his place upon the coronation chair. The chair, also known as St. Edward's Chair or King Edward's Chair, was commissioned by King Edward I between the years 1297 and 1300. Edward had it made in order to contain the Stone of Schoon, or the Stone of Destiny, which he brought from Scotland in 1296 following his victory over the Scots. The stone was previously used by Scottish kings to sit on when they were crowned. The chair has been used for coronation since maybe as early as 1308, but for sure it was used in 1399 for Henry IV. It's possibly one of the oldest and most famous chairs in the world, and it's still being used for its original purpose. The stone is made of lower old red sandstone and weighs around 335 pounds. There are many legends as to where it could have originated from, with the most popular being that it is the stone in which Jacob rested his head in Bethel in Genesis 28 verse 18. The original idea for the chair was for it to be made of gilt bronze. The chair was cast, but they changed their mind before it was finished and a new one was made of wood. The Gothic style chair is carved from Baltic oak and stands at 6 feet 9 inches with four posts and a high back. The arms are upswept and were originally decorated with carved lions. It was painted and covered in gilt, enamel, and colored glass, but those are no longer a part of it. The chair is also decorated with gold leaf, birds and other animals, foliage, and gothic motifs, some of which you can still see the remains today. Painted at the back was a seated figure, probably Edward the Confessor, with his feet resting on a lion. However, most of this image has been lost over time. In a more recent discovery, we learned that the chair did not have a wooden board for the seat, but that they would sit directly on the stone until around the 16th or 18th century. The seat board was added due to the stone being pretty uncomfortable to sit on. The four gilt lions at the base were made in 1796, replacing the earlier base that also incorporated lions. The quatrefoil grille surrounding the stone has also been replaced after it incurred some damage in 1950 when a group of Scottish nationalists stole the stone and in the process smashed the front rail, weakening the chair. The new grille also helped the chair restore its structural strength. You may have noticed quite a bit of marks on the coronation chair. The chair is covered with graffiti carvings, chips from souvenir hunters, and scratches from neglect and poor restorers. Most of the markings on the back of the chair came from schoolboys at Westminster Abbey, as well as visitors during the 18th and 19th centuries. There's even a marking on the seat that says, P. Abbott slept in this chair 5 through 6, July 1800. During Queen Victoria's coronation, the chair was painted with a brown varnish, and then restorers removed the varnish using methylated spirits and the wrong tools, which damaged the gilt and made it very fragile. During World War II, the chair was moved to another location outside of London to the Gloucester Cathedral Crypt. Six months later, a white fungus had fed on everything inside the crypt, but luckily for the chair, it was covered in roofing felt and encased in sandbags, which protected it from the fungus. In 1914, a homemade bomb was attached to it, which caused a small corner of it to come off. Even the stone has had its fair share of scars with people scraping it with knives for dust or small pieces. You can even see the hollowed out areas that coincide with the grills of the chair. The chair had been kept at the chapel of St. Edward the Confessor until it was closed to visitors in 1997. It was then moved near the tomb of Henry V and raised on a pedestal. And in 2010, it was moved once again, this time to a specially built enclosure within St. George's Chapel, where it is now heavily protected.